Praise the Lord. Greetings to you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Elder Joseph Wilson. Thank you for tuning in with me on Ignite, where we can ignite your faith, your joy, and your strength. We know the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It is the bread of life. It is my job to inspire you and to empower you to go forth in the Lord. Now let's go to the Word of God. Follow with me. Hello, God bless you and praise the Lord. You have tuned in to Ignite. I am the guest host for today. I am subbing for Elder Joseph Wilson and my name is uh, Evangelist Faith Wilson and I'm glad to have you with me on today. I am so excited. We are in a season of love and gifting and gifts and presents, but I want to talk about the greatest love of all, and that's the love of Jesus Christ. And I thank God for his love. God is love. And a lot of us go through our life looking for that one and true love, and we think that we've found it, and sometimes we end up disappointed because it's not what we thought it would be. But the love of Christ does not disappoint. The love of Jesus is everlasting, just like his mercy, it endures forever, for he is love. And I want to talk about love today. Uh, there is agape love, the love of God, between God and us as his dear children, uh, the love of uh, man and woman, uh, uh, eros love, and then there is philios love, brotherly love, mankind love between one, children, parent, friends, relatives, what have you. Love. Love in general is something that we kind of get into because we want that person or thing to be exactly what our idea of love is. But let's just go to what I call the love chapter found in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. And it begins with the first verse. It says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, charity is love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, you can foretell uh, the future of things to come uh, and understand all the mysteries and have all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. It isn't love uh, giving away. So we have to know what pure love really is. The love of Jesus Christ is pure love. It is a love uh, that, you know, a lot of people, they'll give uh, a gift, they'll, they'll donate, and that's all good uh, to appease their conscience to say that I've done something for someone, but you don't want to give them your time. I mean, how many times have we sent out a text or email or, or something to that nature, Instagram someone, so that we don't really have to really communicate? like we should uh, spend time with one another one-on-one. -on -one. So we'll give something to someone and say, oh, just to say that I did something or I was there in some form of fashion. Charity suffers long. It's not short patient. It doesn't give up quickly and is kind. When was the last time you were kind to someone? I know that this is like ABC building blocks, principles, but sometimes you have to return to the principal matter so that you can go on to deeper things. And charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunted not itself. Very proud and puffed up and arrogant. Look at me, look what I have done, a narcissistic type of view of yourself or what you want. Uh, Rejoice is not in iniquity. Uh, how many people do you know that gets really excited about the fall or, or mistakes or error of someone else? That is not of God and that is not love. Uh, but it rejoice in truth. It beareth all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure. Charity never fails. The love of God does not fail. I heard an adage. It says, love is when you love in spite of and you like 
because of, and we've got it flipped. We love because of, and we like in spite of. No, God wants it to, to be flipped around. We love in spite of. God loved us in spite of our faults. And he knew that we were sinners. The Bible said, behold, we were shaping in iniquity and in sin did our mothers conceive us in the 50th, 51st number of Psalms. It says that. And so we were born into sin. After Adam, we all were born into this Adamatic sin because of the fall of man. But God loved us in spite of. We fail, we falter, we make oaths and promises and our oh, I'll never do this again. And and oh God, I'm just I'm turning a new leaf and oh how I love Jesus until he doesn't do what we want him to do when we want him to do it, how we want him to do it. I've waited too long. I've suffered too long. Why this? Why that? Oh, I've given up on God because I feel like God has given up on me. No, that's not love. Love suffereth long. It, it beareth all things. Uh, when he calls Saul, Paul, who was formerly Saul, when he called him, he said, I, I'm going to send you uh, to this house and, 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 and you're going to be told what things you must suffer. Uh, this is before he knew what his call was. He was like, look, you're going to have to do this and you're going to go through this. But because of the love that I have for mankind, I want you to do this for me. And because of the call and the purpose that is on your life, because I trust the power that I have placed in you. I know that you're going to get tired and I know that it's going to hurt, but if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And, and let's go here to Romans, the eighth chapter. And the 35th verse, these are some of the things that separate us from love. We allow to separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. And it says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation going through distress? I have not seen so many stressed out people and it's easily done because we're living in the last days and, and everything is being thrown at us and there's so much opposition on your job and your home uh, and families, even in church where you expect to have everything just go just right and just so. There's still something that is allowed to kind of stress us, to prick at us. Shall tribulation or distress, persecution, famine, lack. You know, everybody is trying to hustle. They got a side hustle, have a job and a half, full time and two part times trying to make it. So uh, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, and all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. No matter what your, your, your estate, your, your, your goings on in your life, you will not perish because through Christ Jesus, we have everlasting life. We are more than conquerors. We are fighters. We win. It is a fixed fight if we stay in the love of Jesus Christ and if we continue to believe in his love for us. So what shall separate you? What are you allowing to separate you from the love of Jesus Christ? He's saying, wait a minute, don't you love me more than these? He said this to, to Peter. He said this in the 21st chapter of St. John. He was talking to Peter and he was trying to get his attention as to what will face him. Do you love me, Peter? We say that we love Jesus and oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. And it's a beautiful song and we get caught up in the moment. But do you love him more than these? Said in the 21st chapter of St. John, it says, so when they have dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me more than these? What is your these? 
Is it your new job? You've been promoted. Uh, you're making more money. You have a, a great swelling title. Uh, you've been elevated in ministry. Your title isn't deacon anymore. You're not an elder or a minister. Or you're, you moved and you're up in evangelism. And, oh, the pastor called my name more than once or twice. And, and my goodness, do you love Jesus more than your title, more than your position? Uh, are you trying to please the pastor or your congregation or your, your friends or your loved ones more than Jesus Christ? What is your motive? What is it that drives you to do what you do? Is it for self-gratification and glory or is it because you love Jesus? Says Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto me, oh yeah, Lord. We're saying, yes, Lord, I go to church, I, I, I go to Sunday school, I go to Bible study, I sing in a choir, I do this, I donate, and I do la, 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 but do you love me more than these? Will you continue to go to church if your name isn't called? Will you continue to serve even though you don't get position? Do you love me more than these? If your job uh, is discontinued at, at your place, uh, is your career, you get a setback. Do you love God in spite of if, you're, if your car is repossessed or, or, or you had to move into a home that isn't up to the estate and grandeur that you're accustomed to or people associate you with? Do you love it? Do you love it more than you love Jesus? Are you willing to show the love in spite of God I'm going through, but I love you. My husband and I, we, we made a pact decades ago that we vowed to keep falling in love because you have to learn to love in the lull time, the L U L L when things are just kind of in neutral, nothing exciting and wonderful is happening. And, and even in your going throughs, you got to reconnect, refall in love with Jesus. And so that's what we do with one another. We, we say, you know, he knows that I love, my thing is chocolate. I love chocolate. And I, I tell him, I love you more than chocolate. I love you more than shopping. I love you more than my favorite food, this or that. I just love you. And I notoriously, uh, unabashedly flirt with my husband to let him know that I am still interested in him. I am still attracted to him. He still holds my attention. And I, and God was like, this is what I need out of you. I still need your attention, your love. I need you to still chase me, to let me know that you're still intrigued with me. Even when uh, you haven't had this or that and you're still praying and waiting for something that you prayed for years ago, do you still love me? How many of you would want to be in a relationship with someone that only showed you kindness or love or attention when you had something to give them? Somebody that only wanted your attention in our time, uh, the day of pay, when you get paid, here they are, or the week that you're about to get paid. Ooh, hey, you were on my mind. I just wanted to call you and say, hey, let's hang out. Let's do something together. And you already know it's because you have something that they want. I think everybody has that person that only calls when they want something. Uh, in the world, I, I'm I don't know if they say it anymore, but they used to call it a, a, a booty call. Excuse my French. Uh, a guy would only call when, you know, he had an itch that he wanted you to scratch. And other than that, you didn't get his time or attention. Or, or if he came over, it was, it was at night when, when no one else was around, nobody could see. We, no one with good sense wants that kind of love, wants that kind of attention. Uh, so why is it that we feel all right with doing that with God? We only call him when we want some, 
Our, 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 our parent or our child is sick, or I'm sick, oh, you just received uh, a word about the cancer scare, or, or, or you know, I, I've been diagnosed with congestive heart failure, I found out I have diabetes, or, and then people get real pitiful, and then they come to church, and, and they ask, they get in the line, they get prayer, and they call and harass people, I need you to pray with me, are you praying, I need you to fast, and, and then after God does, and he performs the work, you don't see him anymore. More. How often have we done that as, as people of God, as saints of God, that we only seek God when we want something? I, uh, I have a bill due. God, I want this promotion. God, my, my, my child, I, I can't do anything with them. God, where are you? Can you? Can you? Can you? Why not just say, Jesus? I love you because you're God. I love you. I want time with you. I want to connect with you because I just want some one-on-one -on -one time. I think it was Zacardi Cortez that said, I just want some one-on-one -on -one time with you. I, I, nothing else will do. Solomon had it, had it best. He was considered one of the greatest poets or the greatest poet in the Bible. He talked about his love for God and it was greater than this and greater than secret love. How can we reconnect and, and show our love with Jesus? I, I get up during the middle of the night and I'm like, Lord, oh, how I love you. I just want to call your name. You know how we are when we fall in love, just a mere mention of the person whom we're in love with puts a big goofy smile on our face and, and we talk find ways to talk about that person or to bring their name up. We want to be where they are. We just show up where we think they're going to be because we want to be in that person's presence and it just makes our whole day complete and you can conversate. You'll get on the phone and, and the minutes have become hours and, and I'm telling you and you don't even care because you're talking to the person that you have grown this, it went from infatuation to a deep, impenetrable love. And we need that with Jesus. And you know, we, we, we time God and we get down there or we'll recite the Lord's Prayer, our Father which art in heaven, and, that, and that's fine. But you need to go on from there. Uh, how aggravating is it for someone just to say, hey, how you doing? Uh, I just wanted to see how you were doing. You doing all right? Okay, great. All right, I'll see you. Talk to you next time. And you, you can't even get anything out. You, you're wanting to say some more. And before you know it, they're gone. They hung up or whatever. Or they sent out a text so they don't have to be bothered with a real conversation with you. But when you are in love, you make time. You like uh -huh, uh -huh. everybody else comes in second and third because you got to spend time with that person. You don't pencil in the time. The time is just there. You like I, I talk to you later. I, I I see you when I can. But I got to get to so and so because you want that time with the person you love, and you don't care if the seconds turn to minutes or the minutes turn to hours. As a matter of fact, you want it that way all the time that you can, and you find yourself. You don't want them to go home. You don't want to go home. Can't you stay? Don't you want some stay time with Jesus? Let him come in and have sup with you and, and stay and, uh, and abide with you and you abide with him. And it is so wonderful. You find yourself telling, let me tell you about Jesus. He is the best thing that ever happened to me. Nothing compares to the love I have with Jesus. Back in the day, I believe in the 60s, uh, I believe it was the four tops that said, ain't no woman like the woman I got. And we should be like that about Jesus. Ain't no God like the God I got. The God I serve is able. He is love. He is powerful. He is omnipotent. He is almighty God. He is the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father, the great I am. He is Jehovah Rapha, my healer. He is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. He is Jehovah Nissi. He is the God that is there. When you don't have peace, he is the Prince of Peace. He is Jehovah. Shalom. That's who God is. And we find ourselves talking about it. Who is this King of glory? The Lord God, strong and mighty. He is our King. Can't say enough about him. I can't. Well, I'm going to quote Prince here. I can't help stop writing songs about him. I love him so much. 
I know it's only been three hours, but I love it when I call his name. It's no name under the heavens whereby we must be saved, saved from whatever that you're captive to. He came to set us free. His love does that. Not because we're worthy, not because uh, we merit his love, but because he is our father, our savior, our creator. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And he loves us so much. Uh, a real parent. I don't care how frustrated their child makes them or how angry they are their child. They are always there for their child. I have three, and I'm crazy about all three, Hannah, Michael, and Joseph, and they've all done things to anger, disappoint, frustrate, give me sleepless nights. But I, I was telling my daughter this morning, I said, I would go to war for you. I would fight with you and for you because that's how much I love you. And that's how God's love is for us. It is, it is unchanging. He loves us in spite of. Uh, why does he love us? Why is it that he loves us? Because he's God. He is our father. He is. He is. Whatever you need him to be, that is our God because he is love and it is unchanging. The enemy will try to make you say uh, or think that you've done too much. How can you expect God to forgive you? How, how do you expect God to love you when you're an unlovable person? Look what you've done and how long you've done it and you can't change. But God can change you with his love. Uh, my grandmother, we called her Big Mama. She said, uh, God's love will love the hell out of you. It will change you. It will convert you from darkness to light, from hate to love, from strife to unity, because that's who God is. That's how he loves us. It is unchanging. I can't express enough to you how much God loves us and we're supposed to love him just like that in return. Because when you truly fall in love with Jesus, you can love your fellow man. You won't just love who loves you back. You won't just like who likes you, but you will love in spite of. You'll like in spite of. You'll say, oh, I can do all things through Christ. I can get through this thing because I have the love of Jesus on the inside and it causes me to triumph. I can conquer what I am going through because I have the love of Jesus Christ and it is always there. It is unchanging, even though we change. We make vows and, and break them, promises, and, and, and if, Lord, if you just do this, I'll do this, and we try to barter and bargain with God, but God said, I know all of that about you, but I love you anyway. Anyway, so I'm asking you in this time of uh, giving, we passing out gifts, and we're all messed up trying to make sure that we get the proper gift to the proper person. God gifted us the best gift ever known, and that was his son, Jesus. And he gifted him to us because we needed him. Nothing else would do. No other love compares to the love of Jesus. His love will not change. It stays the same. Won't you give him yourself? Give yourself back to Jesus. Be reconciled with him. Ask him to come into your life. He, he wants your time. He wants your attention. Don't just piece him off just a little taste of you. But why not give him all of you? He loves you. Love him in return. Experience the fullness of Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life through Jesus Christ. Love on him today because he has already loved you and continues to give yourself away so that he can use you. For he is love. And there's no greater love 
than the love of Jesus. So when you get a chance, go to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Find out what this love is all about. Say, God, I thought I knew you, but I need to reconnect with you. God, I thought that we had good relationship. I've known you for all of this time, but it's time to refall in love, get a, a, a deeper depth to that love. Look at him in a whole new way. He'd be like, ooh, another veil has come down. Another layer has been peeled back. I know you in a, in a greater way. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Spend some time with him without asking for anything. <clears throat> Try that. Just, just go into Thanksgiving. Say, I love you, Jesus. I thank you. I honor you. I glorify you. I need you. I need you more than breath. I need you, God. You're my everything. Ty Tribbett said, you're everything. You're everything to me. Your life and breath, you're everything to me. You're my king. You're everything to me. God, love on him. I don't know too many people that doesn't uh, enjoy an occasional compliment, especially when you know it's genuine. God wants to know how we feel about him. Let him know that you feel more about him than him being a, a sugar daddy or a, a Santa Claus. But you love him as, as friend, as father, savior. Can't do without you, Jesus. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. And I want to love and know you more in a better and deeper way. More than I love this. More than I love that. I love you, Jesus, because you love me. That is the only way that I know to love because I have experienced your love. Experience the love of Jesus. Even if you've been saved 20, 30, 40, 50 years, there's always more of Jesus than you, that you can experience if you open yourself up to receive more of him. Love him like you want to be loved in Jesus name. Thank you for tuning in to Ignite. Again, I am your guest host, Evangelist Faith Wilson, and I sat in for Elder Joseph Wilson, and I'm so pleased that and he gave me the opportunity to share the love of Jesus. In the meantime, continue to allow God to ignite your faith, your joy, and your love. In Jesus name, be blessed. God bless you.